Bailey uh, is down in the sale rooms. Mark, what's the atmosphere like down there now? Well, in the sale rooms right now, it's relatively quiet. Graham Robbins has just taken his players in behind closed doors and no doubt will be keying his players up for the big one. But as I said, rather quiet. Seven out of seven premierships for sale to their name and they'll be going for number eight under the direction of Graham Robbins in his first year of coaching. I think that the big man's strength of sale may be the telling factor today, but still rather quiet in the sale rooms prior to the match. Back to Graham. OK, we have Mark Bailey in the Bensdale rooms now to uh, gauge what the atmosphere is like over there. Down to Mark Bailey in the those rooms. Well, ten minutes ago when I was in the Bairnsdale room, the players were jumping around, handballing around and very G'd up for the big one. They're out at the moment having their photo taken, so I believe, but that won't take long and they'll be back in, keying themselves up. They must go into the game as underdogs, I guess, but uh, their pace are really going to worry uh, Sale, I believe, today. Possibly there's a cloud over Shane O'Brien, who received a heavy knock last week, but Bairnsdale, they've come down and they've taken the LVFL by storm this year. We certainly wish them all the best. Graham. Right, there they are, the sale boys now, doing their press-ups and uh, seems a bit more atmosphere in there. They'll have Laurie Payne in there. Now, Len, you, uh, you were captain of the uh, victorious uh, VCFL championship side for the Latrobe Valley for two years on end. Should have been there last year, but we won't go into that again, will we? And uh, Laurie Payne, of course, was uh, a great motivator. What did you think about him? Yes, yeah, certainly was. We were very fortunate uh, to have Laurie to put us through our uh, pre-game preparations. And um, you can see the, the type of exercises that the boys are doing now. They, they go through the entire body from, from feet right through, well, right through to the neck, actually. And um, whilst he's doing these exercises, he's, he's talking all the time. But uh, he's, a, he's a terrific little fella, Laurie Payne, and uh, we were very lucky to have him with, um, with us on the interleague sides, and uh, also a, a man that knows many terrific jokes, Graham. Does he? He uh, certainly does. I'm glad we haven't got any sound down there. OK, Laurie Payne is uh, geeing the sale boys up. He is a great motivator, and uh, he not only limbers the uh, body up, but he gets the mind going. And I see Graham Robbins there. Um, pretty hard to tell them now. I see Barry Clark there, number 10 on his back, Kenny Hine, who was a great player, incidentally, uh, tagged Peter Hall in the second semi-final. And, uh, in fact, we gave him best on the ground. He uh, tagged Peter Hall, but his own game didn't deteriorate uh, because of that, which it sometimes does. There's Johnny Shanahan, who's been around the club, number four, and he's back there, uh, who, in fact, has been around the club for many years and uh, was a rover, and the last couple of years has fitted in very well to the back pocket position and uh, has done very, very nicely there in that back pocket for the uh, sale club. So uh, they seem to be geeing up a bit in there now. Yeah, so the, the atmosphere will get through the, the old adrenaline will be running by now, and uh, Sale, as I say, have had this fantastic uh, run of grand finals, but you've got to go back to 1951 in the old Gippsland League when Bensdale and Sale met in the last their last grand final together and Bensdale won so uh, if you're a believer in tradition uh, Bensdale have already got one up in grand finals the Bensdale boys are doing themselves up in their room there and uh, the atmosphere down here is very good the ground is in perfect condition there is a uh, northwesterly wind blowing which is favoring the southern end and a bit of uh, memorabilia or trivia whichever way you want to call it is that Bensdale today have been in the Latrobe Valley Football League 21 years today they have played in two grand finals for two losses 63 and 67 a loss to Tarelgan in 63 and in 1967 to Moe and in ninth uh, and Sale have been in seven for seven wins so uh, their record is pretty clean 54, 55, 57, 59, 71, 73, 75, and of course in 1981 going for their eighth, which is to try and equal the magnificent record of the Taralkin Club, which has won eight grand finals, eight premierships in the Latrobe Valley Football League. There appears to be no changes in either side. Uh, we've uh, spoken to the coaches, as you would well realise by now, and uh, Shane O'Brien, who uh, was some doubt as to whether he would play today, probably not from Bensdale, but I'm a bit sceptical. Uh, he, in fact, is going to line up in the side. He's in the room there, so uh, obviously he is going to take his place, which is good news for the boy. Two injuries to the Sale players. Stephen Claverino in the reserve 18s, dislocated a shoulder, and Terry Wind, um, the, well legend I suppose just about at uh, sale uh, has in fact done his knee again and uh, he has uh, announced his retirement on a half uh, back flank and I would imagine Robbins is on a half forward flank 
The start to the 1981 Grand Final, umpire Shane Carbines, and in they go. The knock by David Mason, Cal, a hand pass. Cal for Ben Stale to Royal, cut off beautifully by Frith, ridden into the ground by Ian Kyle. And the first kick for the afternoon will go to Robbie Frith, the Sale halfback flanker. Played very well on the halfback flank two weeks ago, but named today on a forward line, has lined up on the back line. Up they go, Johnny Kerr in front on that occasion of Ross Simmons. Interesting, I thought that the quicker Kerr may have clicked, uh, picked up Royal, but he's picked up Simmons, and uh, of course out on the other side, King will be looking after Royal. Beautiful kick by Kerr, the big men fly, Bristow underneath it, up far too uh, quickly. It's uh, dropped to the ground, a hand pass comes out, a free kick this time to Bensdale, and will be taken by Glenn Kelvert. Uh, Glenn Kelvert on a halfback flank will drive it out wide. There's the kick by Calvert, looking out there for his teammate, getting underneath it, punched away on that occasion from young Michael Kane to the ground it goes, but young Royal's in there being tampered with. In goes Emu Jones for sale. He's grabbed. What's he going to do with it? How he got out of that, I'll never know. The kick will be into Laurie Haylock's arms. He's dropped what he should have taken. Picked up nicely by Fowles, put towards the goals. Picked up by Overy. Overy can't break away with it, but coming out nicely, we see is uh, Jeff, Jeff Warren, Warren, I think it was. And Jeff Warren, apparently, according to umpire Carbines, has been pushed to the ground. Did you see a free there, Lynn? Uh, yes, he was knocked after he did, got rid of the ball, Graham. And I think the umpires, as with all league umpires, they'll be very technical in this first couple of minutes. Down towards the centre wing division, punched to the ground by David Mason, picked up by Ian Kyle. Where are you going, son? You dropped it pretty quickly. Picked up by Mason, Mason to Clark. Three of them on the run here with the black and white on. Bristow and Overy, two out. And it's Bristow who gets his big hands to it, but play on as the call. He's grabbed. The umpire's not having any of that. He's still grabbed with it. And the umpire will come in and in the sail forward pocket division will bounce the Ross Faulkner to set sail uh, in their forward line underway once again. There's the bounce of the ball. Big men fly up, goes uh, over. He gets it down to his teammate in uh, Warren. Warren gets it around the boundary line looking for Redden back, but it's pushed over the line and out of bounds. Coming in there was Paul Claverino. Couldn't uh, possess the ball and a throw in on Sale's half forward flank. First quarter here and Sale are kicking with the assistance of about a two or three goal breeze. Beautifully from Emu Jones to Barry Clark. Clark on his wrong foot, that's his left, down towards the forward pocket. He's given Coulthard a fair run down there, but Coulthard will pick it up. He'll get caught just as quickly. Dropped to the ground, picked up by Brian Royal. He'll streak off that half-back line, talented player that he is. Suspected injury, but doesn't look too much like it there. Round towards the centre wing. Diving on it was Roscoe Williams. Kane hand passes to Royal, who's backed up. Too much Brian Royal. Couldn't get away with it. To the ground it goes. Picked up nicely this time by Sale. Put towards the centre-half forward division. Emu Jones goes for the ball. Hand pass is bad. Under pressure, however, the umpire says. Caught with the... Uh, when you didn't have the ball, big Russell White. And Russell White will take the free for the Bensdale side on the centre-half back division. Now towards the centre wing, Shanahan best position. Shane O'Brien went underneath it. And it's going to be taken by uh, John Shanahan, who with the black and white number four on his back, puts it to the half-forward flank. On Sale's half-forward flank, it's Russell White. Just, uh, he's taken that mark. The umpire said that you've held on to it long enough. And uh, Russell White, who's already having an influence on this game, has a, drives Bensdale along this wing right in front of the broadcast box. It's David Mason uh, for Sale, whose hand pass goes uh, in the direction of Ross Williams. But back, back comes Laurie Haylock into O'Brien. He can't mark it. it. Big Fleming coming through for Sale. He puts it on the right boot in the direction of Kerr. But coming over the back is White again. But Clark's the ball, uh, the ball getter to Jones. Jones to Grumley. But it's Overy coming through from the back pocket who clear. He gets it to uh, Leskovic and Leskovic knocks it out of bounds and uh, we throw in. A lot of nerves already. Yes, Emir Jones putting it up there, looking for Chuck Fowles. Couldn't find him, unfortunately. Just the kick a little bit too far. Half forward line, the big men fly. It's knocked down to the ground. Picked up nicely by Reddenback. His kick will bring rain. It'll be play on, I'm sure, the call. Hine knocks it to the ground. Picked up there by Robbie Leskovic. His left foot kick into the centre. Nobody there except Mason, but it eludes him. Shanahan gets uh, overriding the ball too. Fair bit of nerves out there. Picked up by Frith. Frith, a nice hand pass to Ross Williams, who's freer, free and clear. He gets it up towards the Coulthard direction and Coulthard good mark up over the back there of Tommy Alvin and that was a well judged mark by Coulthard and he is a will of the wisp this fellow beautiful he can kick. kick six goals or he mightn't get a touch he's uh, that type of player beautiful kick to him wasn't it that's a 35 a metres out from goal. Is this the first score on the board? It will be, but not the big one, unfortunately, for the Sale side. And through for a single off the boots of Richard Coulthard. And Sale now on that Kega Finance scoreboard will move to one point early in this first quarter of the 1981 Grand Final. And Ben Sale have yet to score. Just waiting now. Shot of the large crowd there as we wait. Take it out. We're French Lamont. Having a spell.
sail on top. Huh? Who was that? Ken Hine. Back here at the sail ground, you're witness uh, the uh, Moe ground. You're witnessing the. Uh, Goal umpire indicating a goal. It was for sale, and Richard Zachariah saw it off the boots of Ken Hine. Ken Hine, that uh, very elusive and strong ruck rover from all, recruited from Orbos two years ago by Sale. Uh, they took a lot of time to get him, but it was worth it because he's just kicked a lovely goal to set Sale on their way in this 81 grand final. There's the bounce of the ball in the centre once again. Knocked down by Penn Sale. Hine could have taken it away, but couldn't pick it up. Frith coming in for his third kick for the day. Out towards the uh, Kerr direction. Punched to the ground, however. Picked up by O'Brien. O'Brien, a good hand pass to Simmons. Simmons down in the red and back direction. Fletcher comes out. Traps the ball beautifully. Fletcher now kicking towards the goals for the Bensdale side. It bounces awkwardly and through for one behind. The second score on the board, or third score on the board sale are one one kenny hine putting the first on the board for sale so on the keg finance scoreboard sale one one bensdale are one point there's the kick out nicely done by Fleming out of sight of the ground bristow now having a run on the ball mason back at full forward fletcher gets the ball dropped to the ground kicking against the breeze bensdale two nicely picked up but caught by the ball was maxfield must be a free and trevor maxfield has given the free to uh, shane o'brien who has played extremely well in the only two finals appearances this year for the bensdale club. Waiting now for Shane O'Brien, usually a good kick of the ball, half forward flank, he would be 40 metres out from goal, on its way, it looks reasonably good as they fly high, didn't quite make the distance to the ground, Shanahan, beautifully trapped, picked up by Graham Robbins off the half back line, Robbins kicks the ball, a veritable mile, round towards the speed direction, Peter Speed underneath it, can't get the run of it over there, Calvert is onto him, to the ground, no, picked up by Calvert, he's caught with the ball, must be, where's the umpire, to the ground it goes, a hand pass, in sails half forward line, coming through as Alvin, he traps it well, He's trapped, but too high, and it's going to be a free kick to uh, Tommy Alvin on that half-back line for the Bensdale Club. Not a good-looking kick, however. It dribbed itself along the line, picked up by Sale. That'll be out of bounds on the full, and it'll be a resulting free kick to be taken in the 1981 Grand Final here at the Moe Vale Street Oval, and Tommy Alvin will take it. Let's hope he can do better with it this time. Sale 1-1 early in the game. Ken Hine, the only goal kicker. Fletcher put the Bensdale point through. They trail by six points. Tom Alvin's kicks touched as he uh, as he kicks, but back to Calvert, who's playing well also. He gets his kick in under pressure, but it's out of bounds on the full, and uh, Sale will get the resulting free kick. Sale already, uh, I think, showing physical strength, uh, buffling, bustling this Bensdale side, but Bensdale, when they get it in those spaces, uh, look very, very attractive and very um, damaging. Let's check that Kager Finance scoreboard. 1-1 one, one to one point. Sale leading by that single goal. The umpire has the ball on the centre wing on the outer side, and uh, you're listening to the 1981 Grand Final. Sale at Bensdale, the Gladiators. Bristow will do battle with White. Bristow bigger than White. Nice punch by Bristow. Down to speed. He eludes Calvert, but gets caught. Pushed to the ground. Play on the call. Good tackling from the young fellow Calvert. And now we find the umpire will come in and right on the point of the square on the sail half forward flank will bounce the ball there's the bounce of the ball big men fly bristow and white that time white uh, got the advantage ken hine running in however picks the ball up nowhere to go where is he there he comes out of the pack mitchell tried to disturb him but it'll be taken beautifully there by john kerr who slipped down the ground from center half forward oh kerr has kicked it 100 miles this will go close to being a goal but it bounces awkwardly with a magnificent kick len Pitch. yes well i don't know whether the, he just uh, fluked it off his boot but he certainly put everything into it graham and uh, you could see the way the wind just uh, carried that ball just went across the uh, right to left, across the face of the goals, and uh, unfortunately for Johnny Kerr, threw for one single point. Sale now, 1-2-8 on the Kega Finance scoreboard early in the first quarter. They lead Bensdale one point. There's the kick out, Bristow, good mark, Bristow, going to be a good battle this between he and White. Bad hand pass, however, he's put his teammate under pressure. Laurie Haylock is in there, and umpire Shane Carbines on the half-forward line for Sale will have no uh, hesitation in bouncing this Ross Faulkner. Up goes Bristow and White again. Bristow again gets the knock. Laurie Haglock sharks it down towards the centre wing. It goes coming through. Well trapped Ross Williams. Williams for sale. Puts it towards the boundary. It's over the line and out of bounds. A throw in again on Sale's half forward flank. I can't understand why Trevor Fletch is languishing back in that forward line with their best forward White on the ball. It seems a bit silly. There's the throw in. One patch will comment on that in just a moment. There's the ball and now over the top of Chook Fowles. Couldn't get it. It's picked up by White. He's certainly been in everything. Gets it to Ross Simmons in the centre of the ground. This time in front of John Kerr. A hand pass to that elusive Bruce Cowell. Bruce Cowell at the centre wing looking for Redden back. Finds his chest.
Davis, beautifully done. He let out in front of John Shanahan and from centre wing drives the red legs into attack. Fleming, can you get it? You can't. To the ground it goes. Maxfield tried. Grab then were not in possession, I thought, Cal, but play on. And now on the Bensdale half forward flank, no alternative again from umpire Carbines to bounce the Ross Faulkner. Certainly very tentative, both sides here lining up against each other, trying each other out as Fletcher bounces the ball. The big men fly, but Kyle takes it off the pack, has a fresh air shot, it'll be a bounce again, and umpire Carbines will dispatch the ball into this Moe turf in exactly the same position as he did 15 seconds ago. 1-2 at the moment to one point, and uh, Sale leading. Kyle gets it, uh, unfortunately for him, to Shanahan. Shanahan now putting it out towards the centre wing. John Kerr, well done, son. Gets it uh, in front of his opponent in Ross Simmons, but it goes over the line and out of bounds for a throw-in on the centre wing. Sale kicking with about a two or three goal breeze. Both sides feeling themselves out at the moment, and of course it is a grand final. Bristow and White, but it's Fowles, the smaller man who takes it. He's caught with the ball, and uh, Russell White, who's coming in for a very influential fourth or fifth kick, Len Pesh. Yes, he is. Um and 15 metres to boot. I've just said he's the valuable forward because I think that's where his big marking is what uh, Bensdale need down there and Fletch is really a knock ruckman. I think, Richard, they may be prepared whilst they're kicking against the wind to uh, to let the other player roam on the ground and Fletch will be content to sit back there. I think we might see something different in the second quarter. There's a nice mark off the boots of uh, Brian Royal and it has been marked by Chris Russell in the forward pocket division, diving forward. And we're going to wait now to see if Chris Russell can put this goal through for the first for Bensdale, which will give them only a one-point disadvantage on that Kager Finance scoreboard. Back he goes, on its way, looks pretty good from here, but one point, says the umpire, and put off the boots there of uh, Chris Russell, the full forward for the Bensdale side. Just a comment, Len, on uh, Russell White. Yeah, so I, I was uh, not only with White, but also with Bristow. I was, I was uh, more concerned in seeing him lining up at uh, full forward at the, the first bounce because, you know, I think it's important. You must have your best ruckman take that first knock in, in any game, but more so in a grand final. I'll explain that. Uh, I was talking to Neil Bristow before the game, and he said Mason, uh, because of his confidence, needs to be on the ball immediately the game starts. Otherwise, uh, he's conf he needs to touch it early, in other words. So Bristow's prepared to sacrifice himself. Well, and, it, it uh, hasn't worked, Richard. Right. Not as yet. The ball, centre of the ground at the moment, over the top of the pack it goes. White, uh, not this time, but Leskovic gets it down towards Cal, right on the point of the square. And Cal, although kicking against the breeze, will drive this ball well forward. Now he goes for a wobbly short pass, but Simmons again in front of Kerr. And he'll have to watch uh, uh, this Johnny Kerr. He was an elusive player uh, a fortnight ago against Benz, uh, against Taralkin, but Simmons getting away from him. Not a good kick. It's allowed the backman to come in here. Getting underneath it there was Hughes, I think it was. This is the, the bloke they've got to watch. Yes, Brian Royal trying to go in there nicely uh, trapped by Robbins Robbins playing all over the ground obviously taken whoops fouls gets his head taken off and it's going to be a free there's a hand pass nicely done too whoops he's grabbed Ron Hughes but he gets away with it gets a left foot kick towards the center Fletcher now on the ball trapping this ball well today Trevor Fletcher his hand pass is uh, however not quite as effective as it drops to the ground half forward flank for the Ben Sale side caught with the ball umpire you're going to bounce it no you're going to play on and now it's picked up by Fleming having a lot of fresh air shots out there yeah they catch. certainly are they're both sides are going in with plenty of vigor, Graham, uh, but I think that Sale are possibly winning.